so golf kid how yep. long has n plus plus been out now since like 2015 i think so like three years right maybe yeah roughly i don't remember when the ps4 came out hmm. i think that was i think ps4 was 15 and then steam was 16 sounds about right yeah it's been like three years since this game came out and nobody has made a podcast about it yet golf yeah a podcast dedicated entirely to n plus plus and the n plus plus community you say that like it's surprising i say that like it's the intro to the very zeroth episode <laughs> of the brand new n plus plus podcast uh, welcome <laughs> I think that sigh was the perfect response. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. So I'm going to explain to our millions of listeners what the plan is here. I pulled up a random N++ episode, and Golf Kid and I are going to review every level in it. As briefly or as lengthy as we decide the level deserves. Yeah. <laughs> Um, that some may not deserve much. Oh yeah, no. This game has a lot we'll, of filler. We'll see. Actually, you know what? Maybe this game doesn't have a lot of filler. Maybe this game is like 20% filler and it just feels like a lot. But nobody knows because nobody's taken the time to review every level. <laughs> Who would do such a thing? What kind Who of crazy cra person? <laughs> anyway, so the level anyway. I pulled up... Or rather, the episode I pulled up was E17 in the N++ so this, tab. This would be many more episodes if you don't level one at a time. Oh, yeah. And I have no idea how often I want to do this. Probably <laughs> just on a whim. I imagine, ep I imagine episodes of the podcast wouldn't take more than, like, five or ten minutes unless it's a really good episode. So, <laughs> if I'm ever really feeling it, maybe a few episodes in a day... <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. So, uh, I'm on E17 right now. Let me give a little bit of background to episode E17 in the N++ tab. The current zeroth for episode E17 is held by J... Nope, that's a hacked score. Is held by Outright <laughs> OJ with a time of 195.317. Uh, Jay's time is 235.650, and it's a lie. <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah. So, outright I... OJ has the current zeroth. The five levels are currently held by JP27Ace, JP27Ace, Outright OJ, Outright OJ, and Slomac. With a Who tied zeroth is... by Person Man. And Slomac was known for, I think, pretty much the entirety of his actual playing career is Borland. Oh, that's Borland? That's Borland. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah, uh, for the V2 listeners out there, Borland is also known as White Whale in V2. <laughs> I'm sure I'm giving all kinds of useful so, information yeah. that people want to know. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah. Why would you give anything else? Oh, yeah. So let's get into this. Uh, so the first uh, level in this episode is Medium-Sized Shop of Horrors, Golf Kid. Which is a great name. Yeah, it's well, a very it's good name. Me. I imagine that's going to be the most common comment on episodes <laughs> of this podcast. Uh, yeah, it might be. Yeah. There, there's a strong possibility for that. Either that or this level is filler. I believe or, there's or... a good chance that's going to be up there. Or the challenge is very memorable for oh, some yeah. reasons. Definitely. I feel like every episode has at least one memorable challenge. Mm, we'll see. Okay. Well, I e feel e like... E either a challenge or just the level itself. Yeah, that's fair. Maybe a G++, maybe a completion. But most episodes have something memorable somewhere in them. Yeah. And I think medium-sized shop of horrors is not one of those. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is. Uh, I remember this level, and I don't know why. 
Um, I think the G minus T plus challenge here is quite a bit of fun. Uh, there's also a corner jump that you can go for to get to the exit switch if you're speedrunning the level, which is a tighter jump than it looks. And so I remember doing that a lot. I also remember in the challenge doing T+, the mini drone at the end of the level can really screw you over. Um, it can really feel random, honestly, whether or not you get that. I think I remember being so, kind of annoyed by that, actually. So since I don't actually have the game up... Yeah. I was not looking at the right level, and it's not the one I thought it was. Oh, okay. Which and one were you thinking it's, a, it's actually less memorable oh. than I thought. So, Oof. Um, yeah. What do you think of medium-sized Shop of Horrors, then, the actual one? Uh, I don't really have thoughts. Yeah, I guess you like, haven't gotten I, to it yet in Challenges. For Challenges, no. Right. And without that, it's really not a very interesting level. Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I would agree with that. Okay. I'll, le I'll let you know when we get to the one that I thought we were talking about. <laughs> okay, should we have some kind of a rating system for levels? Or should uh, we just do, like, a silly one? Just, like, uh, rate it whatever you want, and it doesn't actually matter because ratings are meaningless. Need, do we need to rate it all? Yeah, we probably don't. And we just, just move on. Yeah. I, I vote for that. That's probably a good solution. <laughs> okay, so medium-sized Just, don't, shop just of don't go accusing me of having brains again. Gets the big old stamp of has been reviewed. Yeah. Okay. The next it's a worthy level, stamp. E1701. When not to jump. Now here's that... the thing. This is late in the E row. I feel like the lesson this is teaching has been taught by this point. <laughs> you might think. But it's still, maybe it's just for me, it's still a challenging level. Yeah, at, least it's... To go, at least to go fast. It's challenging. Okay, to go which, fast, that's fair. Which, if you don't go fast, what even is the point? Yeah, I guess that's true. Because um... I, I, I do remember going for high scoring and you do actually need to jump despite the level name yeah you do so really the uh well no i guess i guess the first rocket does kind of come into play doesn't it it sneaks up on you i do remember that about that rocket is that it often gets you when you don't expect it to if you don't care about speed, it's not that hard to get rid of. Right. It, at least is my gut feeling. I don't I don't think I've ever not gone for speed, so... Yeah. If you are going for speed, there's a decent chance you'll try to jump over it, and you'll jump too early, and it'll catch you. Uh, I haven't high-scored it recently enough to really have... But that sounds right. Yeah. The challenge here is G minus T plus. Which and... I very well may have done just going to unlock all the secret levels. Yeah, I don't remember it being very difficult. As long as you're, you know, taking it slow. Yeah. It's really not very difficult. I'm, I may have done the challenge on uh, the first level for that too, actually. I have no idea. Until we get to see the other levels, then maybe I might remember. Uh, yeah, actually, you probably did. That's probably the <laughs> second easiest challenge in the uh, the episode after this one. Any other comments about when not to jump? Um, you need to jump, even though it says not to. Yeah. I Although, I guess, there is to say. Uh, I don't know, I guess it's, it's, it doesn't say don't jump, it just says when not to. Yeah. Which does actually imply that there's times to jump. That's a good point. Moving we gave on. it we gave it a bad reputation at start. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's still just okay. Libel. <laughs> Slander. <laughs> Next level, E seventeen oh two is Cinnabomb. Oh, that's a good name. I don't think I ever 
paid attention to that name. This one I remember was on the uh, their GDC talk. Oh yeah, it as, was. As an example of how levels, the, you know, the exact same level can play differently as a there and back for the exact same portions with the drones in the middle. Right. Which it really does. Yeah. I remember those drones in the middle giving me a hard time when I had first played the game. Surprisingly, and... I don't think they did that much for me. Oh. I know, I've, I've got a reputation, <laughs> but those are really not that hard drones. Yeah, at this point, I mean, you know, I've we all get better at the game over time. I don't think I struggle with yeah. them at all anymore, but... The challenge here is G minus T plus. Uh, for the T plus, you have to get behind that Gauss at the start of the level. But doing okay. that... It's not a long hallway you need to get through. I don't remember that being particularly difficult either. Honestly, you might have done this one as the other challenge. Yeah, I might have, yeah. Where does the uh, door unlock for it? At the exit switch? I believe so. So you've got to unlock both, or avoid both the goal and the exit plus? Yeah. But that's just a matter of jumping against the ceiling. Well, yeah. Yeah. But it still does add that little bit extra of... Yeah, you know. for sure. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Was there a whole lot to say other than it's it's a GDC level as an example? That is actually a very good example for what they were demonstrating? Yeah, I think it's a fine level, but nothing too noteworthy about it too, other than... Nothing too monumental? Yeah, exactly. E1703, though. Master Exploder. See, that's the one I thought we were talking about. Oh, yeah. For the first level. This is a fun one, and I like levels like this, where you have uh, either just like a rocket so or a gauss, many routes. and a bunch of switches, and yeah, just a bunch of routing options. Levels like this are tons of fun to me. Not just for high scoring, just for playing. I, I remember this took me a while because there were a couple switches, and I don't remember exactly which ones that uh, really took me a while to figure a good way to, to get to oh, yeah. safely and survive. Yeah, this level definitely benefits from the, uh, the input buffer late jump. It makes it a lot easier. Okay, yeah, I don't remember it that well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I may have high scored, if this was a level of the day at some point, I may have high scored it. Hmm. I guess you could, if it, if it was a level of the day, I'd be in the top 20, so you can just look at that real quick. If I'm Is in the top Golf 20... Is Kid in the top 20 on this level? You know, I don't think I have high scored that, actually. I don't see Golf Kid anywhere on there. Yeah. I do see Zap KT in the top three, though, which is always fun. Seeing those older <laughs> names on there. Oh, okay. Yeah, I got you. Yeah. Took me a while to figure out who you were talking about. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> that's not how I ever said. I always just say zapped. <laughs> I think that's how I've always said it in my head, and that's the first time I've tried to say it out loud. <laughs> I don't. Know, that's that's a hard name. That's not a name for saying out loud. Yeah, here, let me try that's one more problem. time. Zapped. Yeah, yeah that's, that's pretty bad. much how I say it. Yeah. Let's see. The challenge here is G plus T plus O plus, which is not really that hard because you get G plus T you get G plus O plus automatically right. and then there are two mines before the series of doors at the end and as long as you toggle all the mines in that hallway you automatically hit all the gold in there so yeah yeah I don't remember this challenge being anything too I, special. I might, have, I might have done that challenge actually yeah it's not really much beyond completion I think the mine in the upper left is a little tricky to get. Uh, it involves a kind of an interesting wall jump. And probably rocket manip like, just set up? Yeah. Yeah. Not, not really, like, serious rocket manipulation on the level. Right. But enough to give it that little extra kick that makes challenges fun. Yeah. Yeah. 
I can't think of the what level it is off the top of my head. Name or level ID, but the one that's uh, G plus T minus with the chamber on the left side that has a rocket like kind of in the corner. And it's four gold centered around a toggle mine, and there's like ten sets of those. Oh, that one. And three switches that unlock uh, mini drones that just loop around the edge of the level. Oh, what is the name of that level? Looks and there's, like a big one. And there's a rocket that's right next to one of the sets in the corner for the G plus T minus. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, you know the one. Yeah, I know the one. I'm sure a lot of people listening know the one. to this podcast yeah. right now are saying, Hey, you idiots, it's this one. It's middle of the tab somewhere. Yeah, it it's is. One by column. It's not I just one don't of remember the hardest ones that. in the game. But, but it's, it's very memorable. Yeah, definitely. It's uh, definitely I, one of those middle of the game kind of milestone ones. I mean, I, I would call that one of the harder... No, not like it's hard enough that i don't think i've done not, it yet not in the top five or top ten yeah. maybe in the top ten but like top but it would be like outside sure. top ten yeah yeah what why are we reviewing levels that aren't in the episode <laughs> <laughs> that's a good question i am a terrible guest for this <laughs> apparently we'll get to that level when we get to it <laughs> okay so master exploder has been reviewed. We did it. Last level of the episode. I think this is the most memorable one in it. Oh, absolutely. By, by quite a bit. There are a number of levels that use this uh, strobe laser gimmick, but I think this is the first one you're going to run into on a normal playthrough. Is it really? I think it is, because most yeah, of the other ones right. are in Ultimate Tab, right? Or X-Row. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, and after playing those other ones, this one's really easy. But... Comparatively. Like when you... Like with most new mechanics in the game, when you first get to it, it takes some adjustment. Yeah. But once you get the idea down, it's really not very difficult. And just a general rhythm. Yeah. But like all levels of this type, it sucks to high score. Oh, yeah. For sure. <laughs> of course, the other memorable thing about this level is that it remixed for what some people say is the best solo level in the game, mm -hmm. which is Dark Castle in the question mark tab. Right. Which is also a very good level. I'm not sure I'd put it as the best. And I was hugely intimidated by it. Yeah. Before I first played it, and then once I played it, it's like, oh, it's not too bad. But not of the level that I would call it my favorite. Yeah. For sure. I think one thing that I like about this level is not necessarily about this level, but just something that this kind of represents in the game, where this is E1704. If you're doing a normal playthrough of the game, you're thinking, like, I'm on the home stretch. I'm so close to the end, if this yeah, is your no first matter, time playing. No matter which way you go, either columns or rows. Exactly. And this is teaching you a new mechanic. I mean, not a new mechanic, but a new level type, basically. A new way to use an entity in the game. Yeah. You learn it. You have to learn this new thing. They're still doing tutorial levels at E17. And by the well, time you get I, through it, you know, there are other levels like this that'll come up in the future. This feels like an introduction to those level types. I just think that's... I would, I, I would call just the general difficulty of the entire mechanic to be hard enough that it's not really an intro. Sure. Not intro, but it is a tutorial for the mechanic. I would think. Uh, maybe. I guess I can see. That's just an interesting thing that I think they were able to do with level design in this. 
Oh yeah, there's just so many options levels. for level design. Exactly. You can have levels that are inherently hard and just place them later in the game and set it up in such a way that, you know, you're still teaching the player new things late in the game. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's the main idea that I was trying to get at there. And and I think it shows just their abilities as level designers. Oh yeah. To be able to have those kind of ideas and then just like game designers for the difficulty of being able to put it you know to, to know a spot to put it like that i also like the name of this level being abject terror i think kind of going along with what i was saying about teaching the player new things this late in the game <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> you feel like you're on the home stretch and you get here, and I can't imagine anybody not struggling with this level the first time they play it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I would agree. And you just get that feeling of abject terror. Yeah, exactly. Deep in your soul. It is it is perfect. That name, at least. Okay, you might be right, going back to or you might be right that level naming is going to be the biggest, <laughs> most recurring theme. I I usually like to think that MetaNet, more than anything else, is great at level design, but honestly, more than anything else, they are great at level naming. They are very, very good at level design as well, but naming levels, the, the, they are the, the best. The question becomes, how much does level naming become a part of level design? That's true. That's a good point. It's just one aspect of a field that they are great at. Yeah. Yeah. I will wholeheartedly agree. The challenge here is G minus T minus. I think once you get the laser rhythms down, that doesn't add a whole lot of difficulty to the level, but it does make the rocket a factor. Because if you're playing the level normally, you can, as I recall, kind of ignore the rocket and you'll be fine. Um, I don't remember. But if you're trying to do G-, minus, that means you can't jump anywhere in the middle of the level, so you actually have to work out the rocket manipulation a certain way. I think it speaks to something that really the only thing I remember about the level is the strobe lasers. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> I think other than that, it's not a particularly interesting level once you've played the rest of the game. Yeah, I guess that's fair. Which, I mean, going back to what I was saying about this being a tutorial for a level type, I think that's perfectly Fair. fine. Yeah. Yeah. Is that everything we want to say about E1704? Uh, probably. Yeah, I think we've said quite a bit. So, E17 as a whole. I think it's okay. Yeah, it's a fine episode. Yeah. It's... it's the same as a lot of them that the last level you could almost say is a, a spike in difficulty right i think it's got some good challenges none of them are too hard but they all add the i think just that little bit that makes you play the level different yeah i was about to say i think the best challenges are the ones that only make you need to think a little bit but that's not true if every <laughs> challenge required you to rethink everything that would get really tiring really quickly i think it's good yeah. that they do those kinds of challenges sparingly through the game but yeah the like the challenge on e1703 i think is a great example of a good challenge for this game it adds a couple extra things to think about and that's about it and the execution is reasonably difficult yeah so yeah i think that i think that about sums it up yeah we're just kind of sitting here not really saying anything so yeah. i think that in itself says things i agree um hey golf kid yep do you want to be a part of a podcast idea that i just had 
where we review episodes of the episodes of the N++ podcast. <laughs> Let's just no. listen back to what we just said and review ourselves. No, thanks. Okay, that's fair. <laughs> well, thank you, Mr. Mister Kid, for being uh, the special guest on the very first episode of uh, I should probably name this podcast, huh? Uh, that sounds like a great name. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's... <laughs> that's a good enough name. Um, yeah. Oh, I'm sure I'll come up with something later. <laughs> uh, that's also a pretty decent name. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> Honestly, I'll probably name it one of those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm glad I could help. Oh, 